Eddie's Attic is a live music venue indicator, and on this Saturday night, the room is filled to the brim with people enjoying each other, the food and the drink, and waiting for the show to begin. <laughs> While in the back, Michelle Malone and her band get ready to bring the house down with music from her latest album, 1977. It debuted April 22nd. I'm ready. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Michelle Malone. Oh, my. Yeah. It's like you know what you're doing. <laughs> Michelle Malone defies description as an artist. This singer, songwriter, producer does rock and roll, folk, rhythm and blues, and is apt to put aside her acoustic or slide guitar and pick up her harmonica. It is the quality of her musicianship that led her to performing with Greg Allman, Chuck Lavelle, John Mayer, Sugarland, and the Indigo Girls, just to name a few. But it is her prowess with the slide guitar that makes people sit up and take notice. God, look at that. It may be too big, but this was the um. Mm. Can I put it on now? Yes. And that's where we started our one-on-one -on -one when she came to the studio. And now I've had a wardrobe change. <laughs> I didn't pick up a slide until about, um, you know, 2002, really. I've been playing guitar for many years, and I was in the studio one day recording uh, a song on Stomping Ground. It's called Lafayette. And of course, a song like Lafayette needs some slide guitar. Well, everyone else had gone home. And so I started fooling with it, fooled with it, and finally came up with a part and got it down. And then I had to play the part every night on the road. So I got better and better at it, and I love it. It kind of opened this new world for me in guitar. It's almost like it's two different instruments for me. Because I, I have these two, they're tuned in like an open G, which means you can play slide easier. That's all you need to know. And then the <laughs> other ones are standard, and, and that's fun too, but I, I kind of feel like slide is special. And I know you love Keith Richards. I like his style. I think I used to like his personality more than his style. But the older I've gotten, the more I realize that rhythm is the driving force of everything. So the rhythm in your life, is that the driving force of everything? What's the rhythm in your life? Music. Everything about it. I love music so much. And it gets me out of bed in the morning. It keeps me going when, uh, if, if I'm having a bad day, I just put on music. If I'm having a great day, I just put on music. Who's it's, music? Oh, gosh. Um, I listen to everything. It is. It depends on what time of day you catch me or what day it is. Uh, I will listen to blues and jazz. I will listen to... I love singers, really great singers. Like everything that? from... Well, I love Billie oh, Holiday and Ella and I... and. I love Carmen McRae, and then I love uh, Erica Badu. <laughs> I love, oh. Uh, and what do these so women many. have in common? They're singing, that voice, 
that draws you in. They're able to communicate life. They're able to just reach down in here and play one of my heartstrings. And I have no idea how. And I don't know how I do that for others, but I know I do because they tell me. But I don't know how it works. I just have, as far back as I remember, had this ability to just kind of open my mouth. And sing. And that is the greatest gift. in your DNA because yeah. when I was doing research your grandmother was a singer mm. and your mother was a jazz singer yeah well she sang everything uh, from you know jazz and pop music of the 70s and cocktail music and Mozart and uh, you know we all sang in the church choir it's just everything yeah you sang in the church choir since you were four mm. Also, from your bio, learn there's another side of Michelle that I never knew about. And it was just like three little lines. So you know I got to ask you about it. You dropped out of high school? Uh, temporarily. That's right. You did go back. Temporarily. Yeah. But why? Well, uh, there was a time when I was a teenager that I really didn't get along with my parents. <laughs> I think all teenagers go through that. Right, and, but we had drastically different belief systems at the time, and I think I found it, I found that I was unable to be there any longer, so I ran away. Where did you stay? That's a good question. I, 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 I heard you were living in the streets? Who'd you hear that from? <laughs> I mean, just temporarily, you know. I, I was born and raised here in Atlanta. At the time when I left home, we were living in Marietta, which I felt like a fish out of water up there. Um, even though I made some great friends and had good times there, I, I'd never quite felt like I belonged. And then this is just going to get juicier and juicier, Monica. <laughs> then, uh, my mother had gotten remarried and started having children with that family and I didn't feel like I belonged there either. So I think I was looking for the place where I did feel I belonged. And I thought that was back in Atlanta, back in that world and uh, where my friends were, my, my older friends. So. This is a little insert oh. that had some of my doodles that I used to do. That is when she wrote her first song for a contest in a magazine that she didn't win. I think it was about being a runaway and I think it was like, uh, out in the streets there's a child with a world at her feet and a smile on her face but she's crying inside. It's all I remember. Oh. And I think uh, at the time I was very influenced by Heart, the band Heart, and I probably still am in there. And uh, that's, that's really all I remember of it. I didn't win, so. But it was the beginning. It was a beginning. I would have given anything. How did that influence your music, having been that part of your life that took you away from family, what a part of that do you incorporate in your music? Because as I understand from reading mm. your music, that a lot of it is autobiographical. Sure. So what did you pull from that to, to make your music? Music has been my greatest therapy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've worked it all out to a degree through writing and self-expression. Um, I think, my mother has influenced my music greatly in a very positive way because just knowing that that's the family business, you know, it gives you a bit of self-esteem and almost makes you feel like, yes, this is what I should be doing, right? Even though that wasn't my goal for a long time. Yeah, you wanted to be a doctor. I know. Well, 
shoot high. Anyway, uh, I think uh, when I got into music, I was very angry and confused by, you know, my my teen years, and then running away and all that. I had a lot to work out and a lot of pent up emotion and I play guitar like that, I believe. Well, I wish that they could see the light. Well, I wish that they could see the light. Now, having said that, uh, my latest record is more singer-songwriter oriented and more storytelling and less angry. So I don't know if uh, that's temporary <laughs> or permanent. We'll see. Well, I like the title of the album, 1977, because a lot of the songs on it r remind me of the 70s. Yeah. And I understand that was the intent. Kind of, sort of? I, I just started writing uh, for a record. I, I get this feeling, it wells up in me every couple of years. Oh, I guess it's time to make a new record, so I'll start writing. And uh, while I was home in 2020, I listened to a lot of older familiar music that was comforting. because it comes from a time in my life that was kinder and gentler and safer and all that. So I guess because I listened to that so much, it really influenced me again. It almost was like, oh, everything old is new again. And I, I went back to my roots and, and that's what came out. I'm singing with Monica. Carpenter. I'm singing with Michelle. Come on. I love Come on. this song. What a good day.